Hi, my name is Triphosphate, and today I'm going to talk to you about headroom and gain staging as it pertains to your typical 32-bit floating point DAW. Now, first we need to get some technical talk out of the way. Um, audio in your DAW is really just a mathematical representation of a wave, uh, and it accomplishes this by taking measurements of this, this wave uh, every so often. Now, these, the frequency with the, these measurements are taken is called your bit rate. Um, and a bit holds 6 dB of amplitude change of data, basically. So your bit depth is, in an essence, it's the length of the ruler with which you're using to measure this wave. In a 16-bit system, that's 96 dB of dynamic range. In a 24-bit system, that's 144 dB of dynamic range. Now. I'll go ahead and get to 32-bit floating point in a moment, but first we need to talk about the noise floor. Now, the noise floor is basically along a signal chain, especially in the analog and the recording world, noise is added on to the signal by every element in the chain, uh, which has to be passed by the music in order to be heard over the noise. Now, let's imagine that in our particular recording, we have uh, 18 dB of noise going on, and this is a 16-bit recording. Now, 18 dB is 3 bits, so of our 16 bit, we've, we're left with 13 bits, which leaves us with 78 dB of dynamic range. On a 24 bit system, we would still have 126 dB of dynamic range. Now, let's get into the 32 bit floating point. 32 bit floating point is, is basically 24 bits of dynamic range calculated regularly. Uh, which is called the mantissa, or the basic value. Now, so you still have 144 dB uh, in the first 24 bits of data. The remaining 8 bits are actually exponential calculations. So the result is 1,500 dB of dynamic range. Theoretically, it's almost impossible to clip in a 32-bit floating point system. Um, but the problem arises when you try to bounce your track to a standard 16 or 24 bit PCM format. Um, anytime you've crossed zero uh, in either of those formats, you're clipping. Uh, and in essence, the peaks of your wave are being lopped off abruptly and causing distortion. Now, we don't want that. So, for all intent and purposes, what you need to do is you need to imagine that your master fader is a 24 bit fader and there's 144 dB of dynamic room here, and you can't pass zero, because if you pass zero, you're losing fidelity. Now, this matters because in modern music, we have a tendency to want our music to sound loud to compete with other music. Loud, thanks to a psychoacoustic principle, just sounds better. Now, that's fine. Everybody wants their music to sound loud and impressive, but we shouldn't compromise the quality of our music or our recordings to achieve this loudness. It's really easy, in fact, to make a good mix sound loud later, but it's not easy to make a loud mix sound good. So what I like to do is I like to imagine that there is a 3 dB tall man on top of my meter. Uh, and if I pass minus 3 dB, he's going to be crushed up against the ceiling and killed. So um, what I do is a technique called gain stage. And what you do is you basically you know that you're going to be consuming certain amounts of room in your mix with certain elements. So when you start the mix, you need to basically preemptively leave space for the rest of your elements. Um, in this example here, I took a track and I basically dropped in samples and presets as is, and I didn't change the volume. Uh, so it's going to sound louder than it should. I'm going to go ahead and hit play, and it's probably going to sound like crap. So we would lose audio quality when we bounce that out to 16 or 24 bit and it would sound terrible. So what you want to do is uh, begin the mix by identifying which elements of a mix are going to be the most important. Now in this particular one, since it's kind of a dance tune, we know that the kick and the sub are going to be the most important parts of the, uh, of the arrangement. So let's go ahead and I let me isolate the kick now and just, we're going to play only the kick.
Now, because I took this from a sample pack, uh, it's usually they, the samples end up peaking at or near zero. So we're obviously going to have to turn this down. There's a number of different ways we can do this in, uh, in FL Studio, thankfully. Um, we can turn down the plugin right here, which would turn down the entire, all of the drums, since all of the drums are going to be in this drum rack. Um, thanks to FPC, we can actually individually turn the volume down of instruments. Uh, we can also turn the fader down over here. Uh, and uh, my personal favorite, we can insert a fruity balance here in the signal chain and turn it down there so that we still have freedom to use the fader later. You can also automate this and then still use the fader later and it keeps your automation without interrupting. Um, now, let's go ahead and turn down our kick drum to about, mm, I'd say between minus 12 and minus 10 dB. Let me go ahead and pull up my uh, meter. Okay, now let's get that to minus 12. There we go. Now let's go ahead and add our sub. Now the sub, I'm going to put just slightly under the uh, kick drum. Okay, now let's go ahead and turn on um, our other percussive elements one by one and get a feel for where they should sit in the mix. I, I'm going to start with the hat. And uh, a funny thing about hats and no cymbals is that you can hear them clearly um, very, at very, very low volume. So I'm going to turn this all the way down, and we're going to push this up until we can hear it. And already, we're, we're able to hear it at minus 41 dB, which is ridiculously low. Let's go ahead and push it up some more. And because I know I'm going to have other symbols going on, I don't want it to get too busy or loud, so I'm going to leave it at about minus 25 dB. Now let's go ahead and add in our next one, which uh, in this case is going to be our ride. And we're going to pull that down. And we're going to make it sound about uh, the same loudness as our hat symbol. And now let's go ahead and add this drum loop. And pull it down until it sounds like it fits in with the rest of the cymbals. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and turn on our snare. And we're going to want to pull that down. Now we're peaking at minus 16 dB. I can use a little bit more here, I think. Okay, the important thing to do now is to check the drum bus and make sure that our drum bus alone is leaving us room for all the other elements. Our drum bus now is peaking at minus eight, which is actually a little bit loud. So I'm gonna turn down the snare. And turn down the kick just slightly. And now our drum bus is about minus 10 to minus nine, which is a lot better. Let's go ahead and begin turning on other elements in our song one by one. Let's start with our bass. With the bass, I'm going to bring the volume all the way down, and I'm going to push it up until it sounds about right. And I'm actually going to do the same for um, all the other musical elements. Let's start with these plucks. Bring the volume all the way down and push it up slowly until it sounds right. Now, the same principle uh, that applies to hats and cymbals applies to melodic elements, uh, and it's called the Fletcher Munson curve, where elements that are lower or higher. In 
that bear the same volume as the rest. And this is because the human ear doesn't actually receive all frequencies at the same volume. So the flux at minus 21 dB actually sound as loud as the bass. Go ahead and turn on our next musical element and bring it all the way down. And we're going to slowly push that one up too. And there we go. Let's check our master. We're at minus 6 dB. We still have plenty of room to add other elements to the track and add balance to what we do have. Now, if we really wanted to, we can go ahead and drop some kind of limiter in here and boost the volume uh, and reach comparable levels if you want to listen to it at the volume that you would hear uh, something on the radio for example or something um, and compare there and it'll give you an idea as to where your mix is uh, and where it might be lacking um, but basically what you want to do is get a good clean sounding mix before you try to get it to sound loud it's more important to get it to sound clear and and the mastering engineer, which in my case is usually myself, will go ahead and make it sound loud later. You want to worry about the quality of the sound before you worry about the loud. If, uh, if you like the video and if this helped you, go ahead and uh, hit like and subscribe for more. And go ahead and check out my Facebook or my SoundCloud page if you get a chance. And I'll see you next time.